Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Zadun. I remain Shadow Fury 323, your host. And we are doing one last exhibition match between Flipstep and Dorsch on Ravaged. We've been following Flipstep for the last few games, and we saw them against RAR winning 2 0. I mean, was, I don't know how many games they played. There were just two that were commented on that were, I think, in order. I'm going to check right now. They were actually in the opposite order. I, I casted them backwards. How about that? Okay, well, anyway. I think that actually worked better, though. Like, it, it went from a match that was really lopsided to a match that was really even, and I wasn't sure who was going to win until near the end. So, I think that was still a good progression, even if the timing was wrong. Chronologically, no, but it was a better show that way. I think we can all agree. So, let's go to the last match, which will be Dorsch, who has been really a massive up-and-comer recently against Flipstip. And we'll see how that goes. So Dorsch going for Shieldbot Factory, while Flipstip is going for the Jumpbot Factory. And Flipstip starting with the Pyro. This map, Ravage, for those of you not familiar, it's... Well, those of you probably aren't familiar, probably are familiar with StarCraft 2 and that's familiar with Zelnaka Caverns. Yes, I know. Other than that, as you can see, Cliffs. Spiders work well. However, it's also very flat, so this map really supports most everything. There's very little that it actually has a hard time with. I think the only factor that really has a hard time in this map is probably Amphib, maybe? I don't know. Nothing really has a hard time in this map. Even Amphib has an okay time. It's more just that, like, in terms of the advantages it would normally get, it doesn't have... Actually, no, Amphib's a great land map. What am I saying? That's a terrible comparison. So, yeah, there really isn't anything that works poorly on this map, but Jump Bots get the Cliffs to work with. Spiders also get the Cliffs. So, Jump Bots can jump in. Bit of an issue. So Shield versus Jump Bot is a matchup we've seen a fair amount of. And it's... I'm still not quite sure what to make of it. I mean, I know that the Jump Bot matchup was one of the reasons why Chloe was considered somewhat underpowered recently. Although with the Warrior change. The Warrior change back will still change things, but... I'm not sure how that's handled. I know Sacktoth was suggesting just partly reverting the earlier Rocco nerf. Which, in this matchup, I could actually see somewhat, because that would help a bit with some of the heavier units down the line, like Jax. Although, strong warriors help with the Pyros. Now, of course, in this matchup, you do have the option of going... Well, Roach is an interesting choice, but... You do have the option of going for Bandits, whereas with Glaives, Glaives die to puppies real quick. Which is always a problem. Bandits do not. Bandits can outrange puppies enough to kill them. But no, instead we have a Roach. Right in place, just in case that little pyro decides to go up the cliff. And Flip's even pointed out they saw the roach. But hey, that's fine. They respect the roach. The point isn't so much to kill Flipstep's army. The point is to stop Flipstep's army from attacking from this particular cliff. Mission accomplished, Dorsch. Actually, yeah, I couldn't think of it. Mission accomplished to the point that they could move the roach away, but no, that works. And yeah, pyro, by the way, can be handled by Tick and Glaive for Cloaky, but it's just that... The way that Cloaky kind of went was like Tick, Glaive for Pyro, but then Puppies are still an issue. But that means that Moderators are not an issue, or Zeus for Pyro, and then Moderators are a huge issue. But then Warriors for Pyro would actually make Moderators also an issue. But then Rockos make Moderators less of an issue. But Rockos are also not very good. Well, they're okay, but not great. Bandits work fine, though. As we will just now see, although the Defender is dead, but hey, did his job. Really helped those... It supported the bandits. Got rid of the pyro. It's like one free pyro. Dorsh is able to get just off that. Hey, metal right away. Pretty good. So Dorsh right now, they expanded to their little northern natural expansion. Flips have just expanded to their natural expansion. Also expanding to the center. The natural expansion, I think, is a bit more relevant right now. Given that Flipstip could easily be hit. I mean, Dorsh is setting up to push out, but I think they're a little bit too timid. I think they're a little not timid, but intimidated. Flipstep with those pyros is making it kind of tricky for them to move out, for Dorsch, that is, to move out, because Flipstep could probably just counter any move that Dorsch makes. And what would Dorsch do about it, right? That's the problem. So Flipstep. No, never mind. Flipstep not. Inti sorry, Dorsch not intimidated. Flipstep did not push Dorsch to respect the pyro. So that is going to mean that their center expansion could go down. The center might not hold. We'll see, though. I think it'll be fine. With a commander there and the commander upgraded with the light particle beam, that should be okay. Pyro still being a bit of an issue, though. 
And jumping away. Pretty sure disarm does disable the jumping capabilities. I'm fairly certain that's the case. Though in this case, this pyro... I mean, it can't even reload as jumping thanks to the disarm, so it's kind of hooped. I mean, good combination of Rocketeer and Bandit. Slightly not so good combination of Bandit and Pyro Death Fire. Remember that Bandits do not auto-repair, but so does Dorsch. They're handling that no problem, so that was fine. I mean, it still worked. Got rid of the Pyro, but yeah. Pyros don't die quietly. And Roach still on the cliff? I mean, Roach is everywhere. Dorsch is really making sure to not lose any ground to random Pyros coming in through easy paths. I totally agree with that. That's a very smart thing to do. And there we go. Flipstip didn't respect it. Dorsch had a roach there. Flipstip knew Dorsch had a roach there. I guess they figured that maybe Dorsch thought, oh, well, Flipstip knows I have a roach there. They're just going to respect the roach. I don't have to worry about it. I can move the roach away. Put it somewhere else. Flipstip, if they were thinking that, was wrong, as we clearly saw. And another Oh, this roach is not in the best position, though. I, they were expecting a jump from this cliff, not as so much from, not as so much anything from over here, from that ramp. However, it's yeah, that was a problem. That was a big problem. If, ah, well, I mean, it would have helped with that cliff, but Flipstone just came in through the more obvious and less defended path. Who knew? Oh, that was good timing of the jump too to get away from the roach right before it exploded. But still, that was like that was a good, that was a pretty good exchange. I think Flipstep is still a bit behind on that. Dorsch and Flipstep roughly even economically. The center is still in play. Flipstep's taking that pretty solidly, actually. Dorsch, I don't know where they're trying to expand. They can't easily expand anywhere. Flipstep's taken well. They've they've taken the northwest. They have some pressure on the southeast. The center as well has some pressure. So Dorsch doesn't have any easy places to expand to anymore. Flipstep's kind of got map control. I mean, it hasn't translated to economy yet completely, but they've got map control. Now, Dorsh, are they going to go for a shield ball? Yeah, they are. Going for Thug. Firewalker coming in possibly as a preemptive counter, but just Thug. Not Thug Outlaw, just pure Thug. And Bandit and the Pyro... I was supposed to say where the Pyro is jumping to, but it's jumping into the camera. That's why it didn't look like it moved, but it did. Totally moved out of the way. That still is not enough pressure, I don't think, for Dorsh to be able to take that expansion. I think the center is fine. I think the center is open enough. But at the same time, the pyro is coming in. No, not really. And this convict needs to move back. The convict's not moving back. Convict's dead. That was the only convict that was out here, too. Like, that's... There's not much. There really isn't. I don't see any other... Yeah, there's that. There's one here. There's one over on the north side of the base building up a bunch of overdrive to try to get Dorsh into a position that's not quite so terrible. Well, it's not terrible yet, but... The overdrive is basically Dorsh's... Ace in the hole, I guess? It's not even an ace. It's like the queen in the hole, maybe. Or a jack. Like It's a relatively high-value card, but nowhere near a trump. Anyway. It's pro Timo Timo asking about puppy against racketeers. No, we are not. That is not on Flipstip's menu. They're instead just going for the sumo. I guess to tank the racketeer shots and otherwise hit with everything else? Interesting option. Dwarves moving forward with their commander. Level 2 machine gun and radar. Jack's coming in, though, for flipstep and... Well, not really working out too well, actually. That placeholder really working against them, too. And Dorsh's commander... Good choice in the personal shield. Actually, he didn't even notice the personal shield, but yes, that was actually really helpful right there. Commander is moving back a bit, but still, the center taking a lot of pressure. This expansion here is open. This expansion here is open. This, the eastern expansions are totally open. I don't think Dorsch realizes this. If they take those eastern expansions, they're back on economic parity. I don't think they realize this, though. But those expansions were open. The pressure's... Ah, the pressure's ceased, though. If they manage to keep the pressure up, if Dorsch keeps that pressure up, then a couple convicts over to the southeast will be able to take all these expansions. And that will get them back on par economically. I don't think Dorsch realizes this. I see they're looking there. They want to see what's going on. 
if they can go there, and the answer is yes. Yes, they can. They can take the center. They can take the southeast, or the center eastern expansion. They can take all that. They just need to move a worker forward to actually take it, but I don't see any workers moving forward. Although they have seven convicts so far. Nope, none are moving forward. All of them are assisting the factory. Not a terrible idea, but Flipstep has a massive economy. Building up a gunship plan. They have that on... They've got that planned. It's on cue. And that sumo causing issues. Of course, now the question is, where's the rogue? The answer is nowhere. No rogues are currently scheduled under production in Dorsus Factory. None have been requisitioned so far, and they really should be, because, I mean, Sumo kind of loses to them. Not so much to Racketeers. Racketeers don't... Re oh, that was weird. But yeah, Racketeers don't really have the ability to deal with that. They just get smashed against the ground. Also, if a rogue gets thrown up, there might be another repeat of that image that I'd love to show with a Rocco flying away from the Newton. Although that wouldn't actually kill the Sumo, likely, but still. Like a rogue getting pushed up into the sky and then firing down and blowing up the Sumo. I don't think that's going to happen. That's one of those things that happens, like, once. Ever. And flips up at this point. Harassment on all sides. They did... Oh, they took the expansion over to the southeast. Though, Dorsch did start to take the center expansion. Didn't have a huge amount of pressure to hold it. Or sorry, yeah, not enough pressure to really keep Flipstep out of there. That's the problem. At this point, Dorsch's economy has remained relatively unchanged thanks to taking the center expansion, having just lost the northern expansion. Commander's still around, though. Still actually in pretty good condition. Though, another convict will need to come over to this expansion, or the commander will have to go back down the ramp, because these metal extractors need rebuilding. And these will need rebuilding fairly soon, too, actually, come to think of it, because that pyro... Pyro right here! Bit of a threat! This pyro could be a problem, and by could, I mean very soon will. Aw, oh, disarmed firewalker getting def protected by the defender. Okay, so that's... That's working okay for Flipstep. I mean, they have one less firewalker in the front lines, but they have three. One which is on the front lines, doing a great job dealing with the bandits. Dorsch right now not going for Shield Bolt, which I'm kind of surprised by, but not totally. The Firewalker wouldn't make much difference, but the placeholder would just... It would lock it up, and the Jacks would come in and rip it to shreds. Or the Sumo would tear it to pieces, just literally pull it apart. And... Wow. This is the nerfed Sumo, by the way. But the gravity gun's doing just fine. I mean, at this point, Dorsch, they have no easy way of keeping an army going. And Flipstep does have their gunship plant up. Nothing being built from it yet, but they have that up. They can do stuff. Stuff and things. No idea what that'll be, though. I don't think even they know what that'll be. I think they built it just in case, and they haven't really thought, oh, maybe I should build Banshees or Rapiers. Because right now, they're in a pretty good position. How many Sumos are there, anyway? There are three Sumos. One of which just got built, but still, there are three Sumos. The dirtbags seem to be providing a bit of a problem pathing-wise. Not much, and the Sumo's just going to come in here. Roach won't do much damage. The Sumo will probably spot it. Oh, is it going to... Oh, it's just going to... It's going to attract it. <laughs> the Sumo doesn't care. It's not even going to push the Roach away. It's going to pull the Roach in. It's going to take it. Like, it's showing it's that badass. It can take a Roach to the face. Really, I think it's just showboating. But hey, it can take a roach to the face. It can take several roaches to the face, actually. It could take about eight, I think, before it dies. And more roach attempts coming in here. And roach wreckage. I don't know why it is that the roach wreckage is three times the size of the roach. I don't know what what's going on there. That seems like a small bug, but yeah. It's one of those weird little things. Roaches and ticks have giant wrecks. They have tiny little things that expand when they explode. They're like popcorn. I guess. That'll be the justification for it. It's like metal popcorn. I would not recommend eating that, by the way. And nice use of Thunderbird here. So, yeah, we just see Dorsch going for the air factory. And Bandits coming... Sorry, Banshee's coming in for Flipstep. That will be coming up shortly. 
I... Wow. I... Sumo jump. Just sumo jump. Gravity gun and sumo jump. That stuffed Dorsh pretty thoroughly. And that was, that looked like that was about Dorsh's last little, last ditch effort. The Ragtears are doing a pretty decent job. No puppies yet to counter them, but yeah. Not quite enough. This is where Outlaws would work really well, by the way. And in general, Rogues would have worked really well in this match overall. I mean, what's the placeholder? Okay, so 1500 paralysis damage. So it does take like 10 or so placeholders to one shot one of the, or nine placeholders exactly actually to one shot a sumo. And that Thunderbird not easily getting away. I was kind of weird planes getting dragged around. I mean, they get crashed in the ground and they die as a result, but still, it's like... Although, to be fair, it's not actually getting hit in the ground. It's just not able to fly properly. And this will finish it off. Dorsh, Dorsh's bench... Sorry, Dorsh's anti-air is non-existent. This will finish it. The Raven's trying to do what they can. I guess it's not totally non-existent, but yeah, it's not going to work. Oh, Sprung pointing out that planes actually don't take ground collision damage. Good to know. Although I find it still amusing seeing them dragged around by gravity guns. Although Dorsh's economy right now is still fairly strong for energy. I mean, they, they're not dead. They're just in a really bad position. The shield bot factory is not working for them. The air factory is not a terrible idea, but the shield bot factory is not working at all. Almost spider bot factory for infiltrator might not be a terrible idea, although with the pyro it's still a problem. Outlaws would probably help with the pyro. It's just, yeah, dealing with all this, it's not easy. And Dorsh, not, not sure what they're gonna do, and throws in the towel. I don't know. There was a comment on this game that said that it pointed out how few options shield bots have. I don't know if that's actually the case, because I feel like a lot of the options weren't used. I'm trying to think of why you wouldn't. Like, I I didn't see any rogues. I didn't see any outlaws. Yeah, it wouldn't have been an easy shield ball push. Because a shield ball push would have been not great. But it would have been okay in small areas. It would have been okay against the Pyros. Against the Sumo, no. Hell no. Do not use a Felon against a Sumo. That is a great way to die. But against Pyros, it's awesome. Against Pyros, works fine. And anything else, I mean, Mod Raiders weren't even built. If they were built, that would have been money that wouldn't have gone to Sumos. And then Bandits could have turned them to shreds. I mean, it would have been a lot of micro. It would have been a lot of really careful management of your armies. Like, Shieldbot, the standard Shieldbot ball that just pushes forward without thinking, no. That will not work. Don't even try it. But, a slightly more nuanced strategy where the shield ball is a little bit more careful, that would work. Or at least would have some mileage. But, that's how it shook out. Okay, they aren't apparently good versus mods. Mm, fair enough. But, dirtbags could at least stop them. Like, there are options against moderators. Certainly with, like, rogues supporting the outlaws, I mean, it would help. But the point is that there were a lot of options that weren't really tried, and I think part of it was that Dorsh didn't think they'd counter the entire army. And I think that you, what you have to do is counter chunks of the army. Have a composition that can counter chunks of the army, and then make sure you use the parts of the competition that needs the parts that you need to work to actually deal with the parts of their competition, sorry, their composition, that are causing you problems. That's kind of how it goes. I mean, it's kind of the inspiration behind the the cloaky bot answer with the the tick group tick what's it called glaive the tick glaive strategy I was talking about at the beginning of the game because that's kind of built around dealing with everything with as few units as possible. Shield bot I don't think has that luxury in this matchup, but they do have a lot of options that work, and they don't have any options like glaive versus puppy that just have them lose. Like glaive versus puppy, puppy wins. Glaive versus sorry, puppy versus bandit, bandit can win. It's a bit more up in the air. I don't feel like there's any, I don't know, I just don't think there's any real options that shields don't have, or that are locked out. It's just a matter of making sure to use them carefully. 
And also expanding when you can and raiding when you can and making sure that Flipstip doesn't get away with expansions that only have two lotuses. Seriously, like, especially when they could attack from this ramp. And it's like, there's not even defenses. I don't know. Anyway. So yeah, that, that was that. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and have a good night, everyone.